Minnie, would you explain what's going on? Why are all the dishes from breakfast still in the sink? I thought I told you to get them cleaned immediately. I really don't like it when the house isn't clean. Are you suddenly trying to tell me to do the dishes instead of you? It's not like that, Haiti. I would never, ever make you do the dishes. I know that it's my job. I was only leaving the frying pans in the sink to soak. It makes it a lot easier to clean once they've been left in the soapy water for a while. I'll clean them once I get back home, so you don't need to worry about it. Please just leave them in the sink. Are you sure that you aren't trying to make me clean them instead of you? I think that's what your true intentions are. I can't believe how arrogant you're being. I'm your mother-in-law. You should be treating me with so much more respect. Don't think so highly of yourself just because you go to work. You're just a pathetic part-time worker. From now on, I want the dishes cleaned immediately. Don't just leave them in the sink like this. I didn't mean to offend you by leaving the dishes in the sink. I'm really sorry. I'll make sure that the dishes get cleaned straight away from next time. I'll be back around lunch and I'll clean all the dishes as soon as I get home. Why are you stating the obvious? Of course, you're going to do the dishes as soon as you get back. I would be very mad if that wasn't the case. You also need to prepare lunch for me and Philip when you get back. We're both getting hungry already. Also, Philip's cage and kitchen is dirty. You need to get them clean before they start smelling bad. Dogs need a clean environment to stay healthy. Okay, I'll make sure to get that done as well when I come home. Although, I thought that I cleaned Philip's cage a few days ago. Well, you obviously didn't do a good job enough then. It's still dirty. It better be finished by this afternoon. I don't want Philip to have to spend any time in a dirty cage. Philip is so much more important to me than a daughter-in-law like you. He's part of our family. Make sure that you treat him like a member of the family too. He ranks above you in this family, so make sure you respect him. I do think of him as family. He's such a wonderful dog. I also know how important he is to you guys. You always take him for walks very early in the morning. I think that Philip is a very lucky dog to be living with you. I see him as one of my children. He's very, very important to me. On the other hand, I don't see you as a family member at all. I would definitely choose Philip over you if I had to make the choice. So I am less important than a dog? I guess I understand why you would make that choice though. That's just how much you love your dog. You probably know this, but you're not allowed to tell anyone about what I say to you, by the way. You understand what I'm telling you, right? Everything that we talk about stays between us. All I'm doing is telling you things that you can improve on as your mother-in-law. I'm doing this as a favor to you, so you should be very grateful. All you need to do is shut your mouth and listen to everything that I say. There's absolutely no need for anyone else in the family to know about our conversations. Yes, I am very grateful for all the advice that you've given me. I promise you that I won't tell anyone about the things that you tell me. Mini, You're awake, right? I need to talk to you. Why didn't you answer my call? I can't believe that you just ignored a call from me. Reply to me as soon as you see this. It's very urgent. I'm really sorry for not answering your call. I literally just woke up right now. It's still 5 a.m. in the morning, so I was sleeping. It's still so early in the morning. Did something happen? How could you still be asleep? You're such a lazy slob. You should be waking up earlier to start doing all the housework. No wonder the house is never clean. It's because you sleep too much. Anyway, I'm currently taking Philip on his morning walk with my husband. I see. I'm amazed by your dedication to wake up at this time every day for Philip. What's the reason for you deciding to contact me? I had a lot of missed calls from you. My husband keeps on bringing you up in our conversation. He keeps on asking me if we're getting along well. I have absolutely no idea why he would ask me about you. You better not have talked to him about what I say to you. I would never do such a thing. 
I promise that I will keep our conversations a secret. I have conversations with Roger from time to time, but I never meant to know at all. We usually just talk about the news or the weather. We never talk about anything special. Are you really telling the truth? I'm not sure if I can trust you. I will never forgive you if you lie to me. I will definitely punish you if I find out. Don't worry. I'm definitely telling you the truth. I would never lie to you. I can't believe that he still keeps on talking about you. Philip has been part of her family for so much longer than you. Why doesn't he talk about Philip more? I don't know why Roger keeps on talking about me. You're just going to have to ask him about it directly if you really want to know. I'm not able to read his mind, unfortunately. Is this the reason why you called me so early in the morning? You really are so useless. Why can you never help me out when I need you? Anyway, we're going to be home by 6.30. Make sure that our breakfast is ready by 6.45 as always. I want some coffee with my breakfast today. I also want some orange juice as well. Don't forget either of my drinks. It better be on time. I don't want you to make it too early though, as I don't want it to be cold by the time I eat it. I'll make sure that breakfast is cooked and ready for you at 6.45, as always. I just checked the fridge and we don't have any orange juice right now. I won't be late, as I know that William and Roger have to leave for work by 7.30. Go to the store and buy some then. There's no need to tell me it's not in the fridge. I'm not sure if I'll have the time. I have lost the deal before I go to work today. What time does your part-time job even start again? Was it around 8.30 in the morning? It's not that important to me, so I've completely forgotten. I'm sorry to bother you while you're out, Haiti. Do you know where the necklace is that I let you borrow from me the other day? I can't find it where I always leave it. Do you have any idea what happened to it? Oh, you're talking about this. I borrowed it again because you didn't seem to be using it very much. I was pleasantly surprised by all the nice accessories that you owned. I think this necklace suits me much better than it suits you. Why don't you give it to me? Wait, what? You want me to just give you that necklace? You have so many other necklaces. It's not going to hurt losing one of them. Stop being so selfish over a little necklace. You can always buy another one if you really like it. It's decided then. I'm going to keep this necklace. No, you can't have it. I'm really sorry, but that necklace is very special to me. What? You're not going to give it to me? You really are such a selfish woman. The necklace was given to me by William as a gift before we got married. It's something that I've treasured for a long time. It's impossible for me to just give it to you. This was a gift that you received from William? That's why it's so nice. I knew that you wouldn't be able to choose such a beautiful necklace by yourself. I really, really like it so I'm going to keep borrowing it till I get bored of it. I'll give it back to you sometime in the future. You'd be okay with that, right? Well, I don't really want to let anyone borrow it. It's very important to me. As I told you earlier, I have no idea how I, I have no idea how I would explain it to William either. What if he sees you wearing it instead of me? You can just tell him the truth. Tell him that we're going to be sharing this necklace from now on. You usually store it in that box in your room, right? It's a ways if someone isn't wearing it all the time. I'll wear it for you when you're not using it. I only wear it on special occasions because I don't want to lose it or damage it. Don't worry, I'll look after it well. It's not like I'm taking it from you forever, so I'll stop complaining about it. I'll give it back to you once I get bored of it. I have no idea when that's going to be though. Maybe I'll even forget to give it back to you. Minnie, I have some great news for you. Oh, you really need to listen to this. Hello, Heidi. What is it? My daughter. Emma is finally going to get married. The date of her wedding has been decided too. Emma's getting married? That's great news. I'm very happy for her. She must have found a wonderful man to get married to. 
It sounds like he works for a large company and earns a decent amount of money. She told me that she wants to get along well with her mother-in-law like how me and you get along. We must be setting a really good example. I see. I'm not sure she would use me as an example. Why would you say that? Are you implying that there's something wrong with the way I treat you? Not at all. You're very strict with the way you treat me so I can learn a lot. You're also very kind when William or Roger are around. I totally understand why Emma would think we get along really well. What are you trying to say? I'm always very kind to you, aren't I? You're making it sound like I'm only acting nice when other people are around. I always treat you nicely when it's just the two of us around as well. Stop making it sound like I have two different personalities that are completely different. All I'm doing is teaching you how to become a better wife for William's sake. You can be a little slow sometimes, so that's why I have to be strict with you. I wouldn't have to be mean to you if you could just do everything normally from the start. Thank you for always telling me how to improve myself. I'm really grateful for it. Make sure that you get Emma a really nice and expensive wedding gift, by the way. She is your sister-in-law, after all. I'm not going to forgive you if you get her something pathetic. Also, you better not make William pay for the wedding gift by himself. Make sure you pay at least half the cost. You're working a part-time job, so that should be a given. It's less than one week left of Emma's wedding. I can't believe how quickly time goes by. And I'm really looking forward to the day of the wedding. I can't believe it's happening next week either. I went with Emma when she was choosing the wedding dress to wear. She looked absolutely stunning in a wedding dress. Of course, she looks stunning. She's my daughter after all. She must be so glad that she inherited my jeans. I looked absolutely flawless when I wore my wedding dress. Oh, yeah, I just remembered. I was going to ask you something. What is it that you wanted to ask me for? I'll do my best to help you out. Well, I'm going to be dressing up really nicely for the wedding. Would it be okay if I borrow your pearl earrings on the day of the wedding? I'm talking about the ones with the pink pearls. They look really expensive. Wait, what? That's what you wanted to ask me for? You want to borrow my pink pearl earrings? I was planning to wear them to the wedding already. I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm going to be able to lend them to you this time. I can let you borrow one of my other earrings if you really want. Don't be like that. The pink pearl earrings are the ones that I want. They would match the dress that I'm planning to wear. I'm the mother of the bride after all. I'm going to have much more attention at the wedding compared to you. I should be the one to wear the nice pearl earrings. I think that they suit me much more than they suit you as well. It would be wasted on someone like you. I thought that you own your own set of pearl accessories. Don't you have some earrings of your own? I don't think that you need to be borrowing my accessories this often. I do have my own set, but I want those pink pearl earrings that you have. Why are we even arguing about this in the first place? You should just do as I say and let me borrow them. I can't believe that you're trying to make up excuses like this. It's not like I'm taking them from you forever. I'm only going to borrow them from you temporarily. I've told you this before, right? You're going to listen to everything that I say to you. I always try to do my best to do as you say. If you really want to borrow my pearl earrings, then would you be able to return the necklace that I lent to you the other day? I still haven't got it back from you after I let you borrow it. It's been like four months since I let you borrow it. I would like to have it back. I really can't trust you with my things if you don't have any intention of giving them back. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember ever borrowing anything from you before. You must be mistaking me for someone else. Are you sure you didn't just lend it to one of your friends? You shouldn't accuse me of something that I didn't do. Stop trying to act like it never happened. Go back and read our text messages if you don't believe me. I told you that it's a very special necklace that was gifted to me by William. It's a very important necklace to me. It has so much sentimental value to me. Please, could I have it back? 
I'll let you borrow my earrings if I get the necklace back from you. I guess I did borrow it from you then. I'm sure I left it somewhere in the house. I'll give it back to you once I find it. There's no need for you to be so panicked about it. It's just a necklace. You can always buy another one if you really need it. Anyway, that doesn't matter right now. Just let me borrow the pink pearl earrings. I already told you that you could borrow them and return my necklace. I'm not letting you borrow the pearl earrings for free. They are really expensive. Are you saying that you can't trust me with them? How could you say that to your own mother-in-law? You're really such a terrible person. We need to learn to trust people a little more. That's not what I'm trying to say. It's just that my accessories are very important to me. I don't want you to borrow them whenever you feel like it. It's not fair on me. Don't worry about it. I'll look after them for you. I'm going to borrow the pink pearl earrings then. I'll give back your necklace once I find it. I'll also try to give back the pink pearl earrings as soon as I can. I might have to keep them for a little while though because I really like them. I do have to admit that you have a nice set of accessories. Minnie, I can't believe what you've done. What did you say to Roger about me? I'm sorry, but I have no idea what you're talking about. He just asked me if I was borrowing a necklace from you. He also told me to return it to you immediately if I was borrowing it from you. You must have told him about it. I can't believe that you would do this to me behind my back. Oh, so that's what this is about. All I did was show Roger a photo of my necklace and ask him if he had seen it around the house. You told me that you left it lying around somewhere, right? I thought it would make sense to ask the other people in the house if they had seen it. Stop doing pointless things like that. There's no way my husband is going to know anything about the accessories. He wouldn't even notice it lying around the house. He's already getting pretty old and his eyesight is not good. I'm sorry, but I really want to find the necklace. Roger told me that he thought he saw you wearing it the other day when you guys went to take Philip for a walk. That would mean that you know where the necklace is right now. You're not giving it back to me because you don't know where it is. You're not giving it back to me because you want to keep using it, right? Are you seriously accusing me based on something that Roger said to you? He probably just mistook one of my other necklaces as their necklace. There's no way that someone like him could tell the difference. He must have made a mistake. I have no idea where your necklace is right now. I thought I told you that necklace is very special to me. You need to stop talking about me to other people. The conversations that we have need to stay between us. You can't go around telling other people about it. You have to listen to everything that I say to you. If you refuse to listen to what I say, I'm going to have to kick you out of this house. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. I won't talk about you to anybody else. I promise that I will keep the conversations that we have a secret. I would still love to have my necklace back though. Please tell me if you find it. Good morning, Minnie. You're awake now, right? Good morning, Haiti. Yes, I'm awake. Today is Emma's wedding day. I woke up early so that I could get ready for it. I actually need to tell you something about this wedding. You won't need to get ready for it anymore. I want you to pretend that you're sick and not attend. Wait, what did you just say? You're not serious, are you? Of course, I'm serious. All I need you to do is tell Emma that you're really sick and that you won't be able to attend. I'm not asking you to do anything difficult, am I? I want you to give your wedding gift to William and stay at home today. You shouldn't come to this wedding. Why shouldn't I be allowed to go to Emma's wedding? Are you telling me to cancel at the last minute? This doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. I wanted to cancel at the last minute. I really don't want someone like you at my daughter's wedding. Could you at least tell me the reason why you don't want me at her wedding? Did I do something to Emma that upset her? I'm really sorry if I did. I definitely didn't mean to upset her. 
What are you talking about? I don't think you did anything to upset Emma. I think she actually likes you a lot from what I've heard. Then why are you telling me not to attend her wedding? I'm sure that she would be happy to see me at her wedding. I've also been looking forward to this day for a long time. I don't want you to come because your face is quite exquisite. Emma should be the focus of this wedding. I don't want you coming and taking the spotlight away from her. Wait, what? What kind of reason is that? Are you saying that my makeup is exquisite? Emma doesn't like to wear much makeup and usually goes with a very natural look. You put way too much makeup on and it's going to be very distracting at the wedding. If that's the only reason you don't want me to come, then I won't wear that much makeup today. Please, allow me to attend the wedding. I really don't think that my makeup is a good enough reason for me to have to stay home. Stop talking back to me and do as I say. I'm telling you to stay at home today. Don't you dare attend the wedding. You better listen to what I tell you to do. Just tell everyone that you've managed to catch a fever from your workplace. Nobody would question you not turning up if you say that. I still don't understand why I have to do that. I can't believe that I'm not going to be able to attend Emma's wedding. Why do you even want to attend that badly anyway? I thought that you went with her when she tried on her wedding dress. You've already gotten to see her wearing the dress. Is there any reason for you to come to the wedding at all? Of course there is a reason. Those are two completely different occasions. Please, just let me attend the wedding with William. I promise that I won't do anything to draw attention to myself. I know that today is a very special day for Emma. You really need to shut up. Why don't you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm telling you to not attend the wedding today. It's already decided that you're not coming. Just hurry up and tell everyone that you're sick today. I'm so shocked. This is going way too far. Even for you. I can't be talking to you any longer. I have lots of preparations that I have to make. Have fun staying at home by yourself today. I'll make sure to bring back a small slice of the wedding cake for you. You should be grateful for how kind I am to you. Where the hell are you right now, Minnie? Answer my calls. Why are you choosing to ignore me like this? Where do you think I am? I'm at home because you forced me to stay home today. I'm doing exactly as you told me to. Did something happen? Of course, something happened. I wouldn't be contacting you otherwise. You really need to use your brain sometimes. Anyway, it's an emergency. I was kicked out of the wedding for no reason. Wait, what? You were kicked out? Who was it that decided to kick you out? William and my husband were the ones that kicked me out. You must have told them something about me. I don't see any other reason for them to kick me out like this. Oh, I just received a text message from William. I'm going to check what he said. Give me a minute. He told me that he's kicked the evil witch out of the wedding and that I can attend now. Is William really saying that to you? That must mean that I'm the evil witch. How could he call me like that? I have no idea why things have ended up like this. I have also just received a text message from Roger. He's telling me that he plans on getting a divorce from you. Wait, what? What did you just say? He's also telling me that I should hurry up and come to the wedding. I think I'm going to attend if both William and Roger are telling me to come. I've got to go get ready again then. I'll start heading to the wedding venue as soon as I'm ready. There's no way I'm going to allow you to do something like that. I told you to stay at home today. You will do as I say. Actually, I don't have to do as you say anymore. They both told me that I can cut ties with you as well. I'm not going to have to see or talk to you in the future. So I have no reason to listen to you anymore. What did you just say? Are you really thinking of cutting ties with me? I heard that William and Emma are both planning to cut ties with you completely. They no longer want to see you as their mother. Both of them don't like the fact that you were bullying and harassing me behind their backs. You were always that kind when they were around. So they didn't notice until recently. Stop making up lies like that. 
I'm not going to believe a single word you say to me. There's no way my own children are going to cut ties with me. That's impossible. I also just received a text message from Emma. She told me that I can ignore everything that you say to me. She also wants me to come to her wedding as soon as possible. That's a lie as well. All you ever do is tell lies to me. There's no way that I'm going to have to get a divorce. My children aren't going to be cutting ties with me. I'm not going to forgive you for making up lies like this. Be prepared for a punishment when I get back home. If what I'm saying is a lie, then why did you get kicked out of the wedding? I think that we both know that what I'm saying is the truth. I have no idea why I got kicked out. It must have been your fault though. You probably spread some rumors about me that weren't true. That's the kind of thing a trashy woman like you would do. I would never do such a thing. All I did was tell William that I was unable to attend the wedding today. Although I had discussed with him the way you treat me in the past, he might have realized what was going on without me having to tell him directly. Enough with your lies already. You told him about me. Oh, I just received a text from Roger. No way. This can't be happening. What did he say to you? Was it some good news? He told me that he knows about the way I've been treating you. He also told me that I really crossed the line by forcing you to stay at home today. He no longer wants to stay married to me. It doesn't sound like good news at all. How could all this be happening to me? Minnie, you have to help me out. Please explain to my husband that I haven't been treating you badly at all. Remember that I'm only being strict to you so that you can become a better wife for William. Please, tell William and Emma that this is all a huge misunderstanding. Please, make the three of them forgive me. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to lie to them. It's true that you've been harassing me behind their backs. I'm not going to convince them to forgive you. Not only did you harass me, but you also stole my precious accessories. I have absolutely no reason to help you get out of this situation. How could you be so mean to me? We've lived together in the same house for an entire year. I think that you have an obligation to help me out. I am not obligated to do anything for you. Also, there's really no point in me talking to the three of them. According to William, they're not going to change their minds about the divorce or about cutting ties with you. It's already too late for you to try to win their trust back. What the hell am I supposed to do if all of my family decide to leave me then? I have no idea how to make a living by myself. I don't have a job or any savings at all. Would you please help me out? Minnie, I'm begging you for you to do something to fix this situation. I have absolutely no idea how you're going to be able to get out of this situation. I also don't have any reason to help you out, so I'm not even going to try. You're all by yourself now. I've got to get... I've got to start getting ready again so that I can attend Emma's wedding. I don't have the time to be talking to you anymore. Wait! Please, don't go without me. I want to go back to the wedding too. I'm sorry for everything that I did to you in the past. I knew that I was treating you terribly while being really nice to everyone else. So you knew that you were treating me terribly? How could you do all that to me while knowing that you were doing something bad? Did you not think about how I would feel at all? I'm telling you that I'm sorry. I admit that I was in the wrong. I have nowhere to go if I get kicked out of this house. But my parents are really old and are living in care homes now. I also don't get along well with my siblings' families. I really have no one else to depend on. How many siblings do you have? I have two brothers and two sisters. Both my sisters got married years ago and I have no idea where they are now. I borrowed a lot of money from my brothers years ago and I still haven't given it back. I haven't contacted any of them in years. You have so many siblings. Are you sure that you really can't depend on any of them? I'm not even sure if I can get in contact with them. Even if I do manage to contact them, 
none of them are going to want to take me in. That must mean you treated them terribly as well, right? I had no intention of doing anything bad to them. They still kept on telling me that I was arrogant and selfish. I have no idea why they kept on saying that to me. So that must mean that all the abuse that I was getting from you is just part of who you are. You've probably been a terrible person ever since you were young. That's why all your siblings hate you. Who I am? What do you mean by that? Anyway, we don't have time to be talking about my past. I'll apologize to you and listen to whatever you tell me to do. Please, just make Roger and my children forgive me. I'm sure that they would be happy to forgive me if you convince them. I don't want them to cut ties with me. I also don't want to get a divorce. It's unfortunate that things had to end up like this for you. You were doing such a good job hiding your true self from the rest of your family for so long. Also, you don't have to worry about your children cutting ties with you completely. You're still going to be their mother according to the law. So, does that mean my children aren't going to be able to cut ties with me? The law states that once you die, all of your savings and property get inherited by your spouse and your children. If you end up getting a divorce, that would mean Emma and William inherit everything from you. It doesn't matter how bad of a relationship you have with your children, they will still inherit your property. Why are you talking about my vet? That doesn't matter right now. You're going to help me out, right? I thought that I already told you that I have no intention of helping. Do you not listen? You should try to use your brain a little more often. I am never going to forgive you for all of the abuse and insults that I had to endure from you. Don't ever ask me for help ever again. I had discussed the way I was being treated by Haiti with William several times in the past. I told him how she would insult me and abuse me when nobody else was around. What I didn't know was that William had been sharing our conversations with Roger and Emma. One of the reasons why Roger went on the walks with Haiti and her dog was to monitor her behavior. I later heard from both William and Emma about how they were abused and insulted by their mother when they were younger. They told me that it would happen every time they received a bad test score at school. I guess the people with bad personalities don't ever change. They might get better at hiding their bad... They might get better at hiding their bad personalities, but it never truly disappears. Haiti was kicked out of the house and had to get a divorce from her husband. She really had no one to depend on once she was kicked out. Currently, she lives in a bad apartment on the outskirts of the city by herself. I heard that she was working multiple part-time jobs so that she could make a living. Her life really fell apart in a matter of just a few days. On the other hand, I am doing so much better without her in my life. It feels like a massive weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. I am doing better both mentally and physically. It honestly feels like I could do anything now.